Welcome to my debut floss tube video. My name is Julie and I am the Susicle Stitcher. I'm going to use this introduction video to tell you a little bit about myself and my life as a stitcher. So first, my channel name, Susicle Stitcher. I am an avid collector of Dr. Seuss memorabilia, as you can see here and on the walls and actually all around the room where I am. I'm, I'm recording today in my office where um, much of my memorabilia is displayed. So when I um, first started my Instagram account, I wanted to come up with a unique name that described me as a person um, and also identified my craft of choice. And so Susical Stitcher seemed like a logical choice. Now I've been told once or twice in my life that I have a little bit of a southern draw, so I know that it probably won't come as a surprise to you to know that I am from um, the southeast, um, more specifically Chattanooga, Tennessee. For those of you that um, are familiar, if that kind of rings a bell, um, there is a song um, called the Chattanooga Choo Choo. It was written back in the 40s. It's a big band swing tune um, that was written about uh, the railroad station here um, in our city. So I've lived here um, almost my entire life. I was born here, raised here, moved out of Chattanooga for just a few years um, when I first got married, um, but I've spent the majority of my life here uh, in Chattanooga. I am an educator. Um, I've been um, in education for over 25 years. I started out as a classroom teacher. I moved um, into building administration um, a number of years ago, about 15 years ago, I moved into building administration. So I was an assistant principal, uh, then moved into a principalship uh, for a number of years. And um, this will be this school year, I'll be starting my 10th year um, at, in our school district's uh, central office. Our school district um, is uh, um, a fairly large school district. We have um, uh, right about 45,000 students in our district and 79 schools. Uh, and so it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty big place. Um, I'm responsible for two programs for our district. Um, the Response to Instruction and Intervention, RTI program, and also the English for Speakers of Other Languages or ESOL programs. And I love it. I love both of those programs very much. Both of those programs uh, meet the needs of at-risk learners. Um, and, and really what I mean by that is students who come into a school setting with some unique uh, challenges. Uh, and so I have an opportunity not just to work with the students, but also to work with the teachers who work with the students. And I provide teachers with professional development and um, building administrators with professional development. Um, I love my job. It's, it's, um, there's never a dull moment and um, it keeps me very busy. I have a wonderful husband of 23 years and my husband is a second career teacher, which just means that he started his life um, in a different career. He was a business marketing major and started working um, um, in that field um, and kind of in the corporate world. And I finally convinced him um, about eight years ago to that he had gifts and that he really needed to share those gifts um, with, with students. And he has never looked back. He teaches um, high school algebra. He's taught in middle school math and, and high school algebra. And, and currently he teaches algebra one to language learners, and which is so exciting. He loves it. I have two amazing children. I have a son who is um, 20 and a daughter who is 16. My son is still here with us in Chattanooga. He still lives at home. His program of study uh, in college is mechatronics, which is, um, you know, I really only know enough about mechatronics to be dangerous and a a answer very simple questions, but essentially it's, it's kind of uh, engineering and, and robotics uh, combined. 
And so he will have opportunities to work in the automotive industry or um, really any industry that uses um, um, kind of automated machinery. Um, and so he's a very hands-on person. He's a very hands-on learner. He loves the program. Um, I love the fact that he loves what he's learning and, and I know that when he starts his job, his first real job, um, that he'll be doing something that he really enjoys. And so, of course, you know, for any parent, that's that's what you want for your kids. My daughter is going to be a junior in high school this year. Um, she recently started driving back in, in April, so that's been a huge adjustment um, for us. Very exciting. Uh, she's a great driver. She's very safe, very conscientious, but um, it's been an adjustment for me. I was her primary mode of transportation for so many years, and now all of a sudden I feel like all those great conversations I had in the car with her, um, I don't get to have anymore. Um, so I have to find another time to, to do that with her. We're huge animal lovers um, at our house. We have two dogs and two cats right now. We have um, two big dogs. We have a Harlequin Great Dane, then we have a Labradane. Uh, Labrador Retriever Great Dane mix looks much more like a lab than the than Great Dane. Um, really, the only thing she inherited, I think, from that side was a little bit of Great Dane temperament. Um, but her, her appearance is um, Labrador Retriever all the way. And we have two cats, Jenny and Colin. Our animals keep us uh, laughing and we spoil them rotten. I'm going to be honest with you. It has taken me forever to sit down and think about and, and put together um, a first floss tube video. I have wanted to do this for over a year. I am an avid floss tube watcher. Um, I, I do comment on a lot of uh, videos. Mostly I comment on Instagram pictures that people post, but I have a regular uh, floss tube uh, watching routine. I watch when I am uh, stitching every night and have my favorites that, that I follow and I've, I've just enjoyed them so much and I, I've, I've started to feel really weird about talking about my floss tube friends um, as if they know me as well as I think that I know them. And I will, I, I catch myself all the time saying, oh, my friend that lives in Eugene, Oregon, or my friend Gerald, um, he just got this great new job. And, you know, I talk about you all constantly. And, and you know, I feel like I'm such a, a part of, of your everyday life. And I'm so blessed to be a part of, of your everyday life. But I started to feel really weird about that because it, it's very one-sided, right? So I'm the creeper friend from the other side of, of uh, this virtual world. And, and uh, I thought, if I'm going to claim um, you all as my, as my friends, then I'll give you a more personal introduction. So when I thought about what I wanted to share with you about my, my life as a stitcher, um, I realized that to give a more accurate description of, of me, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to take and, and show, I'm just going to scroll a few pictures and tell you about some other things that I'm interested in outside of stitching. Since the majority of, of what I will talk about on my videos is cross stitch, um, every once in a while I may mention another craft, but that is my, my primary focus is, is cross stitch, but I have over the years um, tried lots and lots of different crafts. Um, I'm, I'm always, you know, looking at things that other people are, are doing on on floss tube and, and on Instagram and I get really excited and think, oh, I got to try that or I want to do that. And so um, I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures of some things that I've done over the years that are not cross stitch related. And then I will spend a few minutes talking about uh, my life as a cross stitcher. And so th this picture that you're seeing right now is in my kitchen. These windows go across the kitchen. This is kind of the breakfast area of our kitchen. And when we first moved into our house, um, 17 years ago, there were those old 1980s um, metal blinds in these windows, and of course I snatched them down immediately, and we replaced those with um, faux wood blinds. 
um, which were okay. I, I didn't hate those, but I really wanted to be able to see a little bit more outside. And so we ended up taking those down. We have bird feeders and things outside the windows. And over time, I, I wanted, I realized that um, we, we adore our neighbors. Um, uh, please don't take this the wrong way. We really have the most wonderful neighbors, but I did not want to sit at the breakfast table and look at their driveway. And so even though I loved watching the birds, we decided we could watch the birds out of another window. I wanted to have not a lot of natural light in this room. Um, I didn't, I knew I didn't want to have blinds. And so I decided to um, look online. Um, I looked at Pinterest and, and other kind of online. At that time, I wasn't um, watching really any YouTube videos, but I did look at Pinterest and and tried to get some ideas. I, I really thought I want stained glass windows. And um, for anyone who has ever looked into stained glass windows, purchasing stained glass windows, they are outrageously expensive. And I'm sure worth every penny of it, but I was not um, in a position to invest that the kind of money that it would have cost for window coverings for each of these windows because I knew that it would be a stained glass, something that hung on the existing window. I certainly wasn't going to replace these windows with stained glass. So as I'm exploring and looking at different options, I thought, hey, I'll take a class and I'll just learn how to do stained glass myself and then I can do it cheaper. And, you know, I really couldn't find anyone locally that could teach me how. I, I didn't want to take... Um, there weren't a lot of options for classes, and I think I could have probably found something online to do, but it ended up that I just didn't feel like that was the way to go. And so I discovered um, this method uh, that someone was demonstrating where they used this resin. And if anybody's interested in it, just send me a message and, and I'll get the name of, of the product for you. But um, basically, it's like a clear resin that you mix together and it creates a um, kind of a thick coating. I, I think that's the best word for this. Like a thick coating over whatever, um, whatever medium you're using. You could use it on top of glass, on top of a wood table, and it will um, seal whatever that medium is into the the foundational surface. So what I did was I looked at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and some of those big box stores to try to find some, you know, what I wanted for the medium, something that gave me the look of stained glass because that's kind of what I was looking for. And so I found um, at Hobby Lobby, I could buy, I could use my 40% off coupon and buy these bags of broken colored glass. And the way that they were um, packaged, it's somehow they run them through a, um, those of you that know something about glass are saying what the name of this process is, but they run them through some kind of, of machine, some kind of drum um, that probably has sand or something in it. Anyway, it takes all the sharp edges off of the glass. So there's still edges to the glass and there, there may be a, a, a more pointed edge, but nothing sharp enough to cut you or anything like that. And um, you can see from the colors that, that it was just random, random colors. And then um, I filled in kind of the gaps with um, glass, flat glass, I don't even know what you call those. Glass marbles, glass flat glass things around the edges. And what you do is you you I got the the windows, the wooden windows from a second hand store. I asked my husband to help me, you know, buff them out. We had to replace the glass in, in a couple of them. I just wanted the frame really of the window. And I spread the, the glass um, onto each window pane like I wanted and then mixed up this resin mix and 
you just pour it right on top. It's thick and you want it to be thick. Um, and I want to say it took maybe 48 hours to, to cure. And um, it was a process. It was a little bit messy, but I'm thrilled with it. And I have my faux uh, stained glass windows that give the exact effect that I was looking for. So there you go. There's one thing that I've um, done in the past. Don't know that I would do those again. Don't really have a place in my house for them. Um, but um, I'm really glad that, that I did it and that I have something unique and exactly what I needed for, for this space. So now what you're looking at um, are some pictures of some rag quilts that I um, made back in December 2017. So I was going to make one rag quilt for my mom for Christmas and ended up making five rag quilts, one for um, my mother, one for my mother-in-law, one for my daughter, one for my son's girlfriend and one for a larger one for my husband and um, I was so thrilled the way these came out but let me just tell you that I will never do a repeat of this again um, I may make another rag quilt but I'm certainly not going to make five of them uh, in quick succession like I did um, by the time I cut my last square um, I thought I was going to turn into a square um, it was just a lot to take on. I didn't even start doing them um, until probably second week of November, maybe even the third week of November. And I just didn't allow myself enough time. I, I thought about it as it got closer to Christmas and got excited about it. And one led to two and, and two led to five. And so I'm thrilled with the end product, but um, it was it was quite a task. So I got the idea to do rag quilts from a someone that I watch on on YouTube. She is not a floss tuber. She is just a crafter. Uh, she primarily does quilting tutorials. She's a homeschool mom, so she does a lot of videos that have to do with her life as, as a homeschooler, and the other half of the videos are really tutorials and, and product reviews and things that have to do with fabric and, and quilting and, and using a machine. She's wonderful. I'm going to include her information below, but it was her tutorials that I watched. They're, they're so simple to watch. I've watched a lot of her different tutorials. Um, over the last few years. Um, simple, simple to follow for people who don't use their sewing machine on a regular basis. And so um, there's the rag quilts. Another craft that I have done on and off for a number of years now is called locker hooking. I've never heard of that before, um, but I loved the pictures on the front of the locker hooking book. And so I'm going to show you now um, a picture of that first book that I found and, and got really excited about. Um, I googled locker hooking, of course, like we all do when I got home and, and found uh, more pictures online, not nearly as many as I thought would, would be there. Uh, bought a few supplies. Um, you do have to use a special kind of foundational mat. Um, you use fabric strips and, and um, cotton string to, to, make, um, to make a locker hooked piece. Um, I started out, I made a hot pad. Um, I'm not even going to, well, okay, here's the hot pad. Yeah, looks pretty pitiful because it is well loved. I've used it um, now for about four years, maybe five years, um, and that was my that was my um, learning piece. And then I moved on to this piece, which um, obviously I never finished into anything, but eventually, uh, when I get motivated, um, it will be a pillow. Um, that was what the pattern called for. Of course, you could do it in a wall hanging um, as well. And um, the biggest locker hooking piece uh, that I did is this one. And this is, um, pro I'm sure this, I, I'm, I mean, this is my favorite. Um, I love, I love Christmas decorations and, and Christmas themed crafts. And so um, this Santa um, was so much fun to do, and, and it's probably hard to, to tell from this picture, but um, there are some specialty fibers 
um, in addition to the, the cotton strips of fabric um, that are incorporated um, to give him um, a little bit more dimension in his in his beard and and there's a little bit of a um, little bit of metallic um, specialty thread uh, to do, just to give him a little bling and, and I love Santa he's just he's a wall hanging and so this is locker hooky so my craft of choice though is uh, cross stitch and that's what we're really here to talk about right so finally this this long into to the video I'm finally going to start talking about um, cross stitch but but please know that um, uh, in in future videos that's the majority of the conversation will always be um, uh, centered around cross stitch so I am essentially a monogamous stitcher that's probably the reason what why I've been hesitant to um, record for floss tube because I, I worry do I really have enough to show do I really do enough um, and I, I think my my thinking now is um, that I will have enough to talk about because I'm going to show recent finishes and previous finishes, um, what I'm currently working on and then plans for the future. And I think that will take enough time um, to um, warrant doing a video or to kind of justify um, a video. But I will probably do my videos no more than twice a month, but it may be just once a month because I, I feel like if I did a monthly uh, video that I would actually have enough to, to talk about. So we'll see. Uh, that could change down the road, um, but I would anticipate every month. That's kind of, that's kind of my my initial goal. So the, the things that I like to stitch are, are typically more primitive type patterns. I, I enjoy stitching um, a lot of different things. Um, but I, I really enjoy primitive. Um, my house um, is, I think I have kind of an eclectic uh, decor in my house. Um, so all I'm going to do right now is just, I'm going to show you um, a couple of things that I have up in the house right now uh, that I have finished recently. A couple of these things stay up all the time. And then one um, changes as the seasons change. And so first, this is um, Home of a Needleworker. This piece um, was the first time I had worked on linen uh, and I hated it. Um, I think it's just the feel of linen and maybe it was the type of linen that I was using, but I was just not used to the stiffness. Um, so um, I I'm, I'm love the finished product, but I did not enjoy the process on um, that fabric. So I've, I'm, I'm actually working on linen right now on another project you'll see in just a second, um, but I do try to avoid linen if, if, I, if at all possible. So the next one I'm going to show you is a Little House Needleworks Little Neighborhood. This is one of my favorites. Um, I customized this one with our last name and the uh, year my husband and I got married, um, and I so I kind of use it as a um, as a family kind of sampler. This um, is uh, hangs by the front door. I framed this myself. Um, I, it took a long time to to frame it. Um, I, pinning it myself um, took a long time, but I followed Kitten Stitcher's tutorial. And um, she did such an excellent job of making that process simple. Um, I watched it over and over and over again while I was doing it, though, to make sure that I wasn't missing any steps. But um, I found the frame at um, uh, Habitat for Humanity and um, just thought it matched perfectly. So this one stays up all year round as well. So this one is Country Cottage Needlework Seasonal Celebrations. And so I've done all four of the seasons. Obviously, this one is summer because it is July. I love these. I love, I know some people choose to, I think Priscilla, maybe she only does the house at the top and leaves the words off. Um, I like the words. Um, so I, I've chosen to keep the words on. I love the little buttons. They're, they're precious. And so I um, 
I choose to leave the buttons. The frame that this is in um, was originally an eight by 10 frame. And I just loved the, the look of the frame. Um, I love the whitewash and, and I don't know, I just, I just like the look um, of that frame, the style. And so my husband was kind enough to cut it down for me and um, so that it would fit these. And so it's the same frame every time and I just pop out and change. I don't use glass on the front of these, um, but I just switch out. So those are the pieces that stay up um, all year. And, um, you know, obviously the piece, the frame stays up all year, but the season changes each year with that one for the summer. But um, those do stay out all year long. So as in future videos, as the seasons change and I pull out uh, previous finishes, then I'll show the previous finishes off to you as well. Now what I'm currently working on. So this is um, Sing a Sampler from Silver Creek Samplery, Sil Silver Creek, Silver Creek Samplers. Silver Creek, Silver, Silver Sampler, Silver, Silver, Silver Creek Samplers. Yeah, Silver Creek Samplers. Duh, a deer, a female deer. I love it. So I am um, so excited to finally start working on this. I have had it uh, in my stash for um, almost two years and I'll pull it out and look at it. And, and I had purchased a piece of linen, a nice long piece of tea dyed linen to do it on. And after the, after my experience with um, Home of a Needleworker 2, I just didn't want to work on the linen again. And so I kept putting it back and picking something else out of my stash to work on. Um, finally decided I was just going to suck it up and, and start this. And, and it hasn't been a negative experience um, at all. I still don't love working on linen, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I really do not. And that is not what I normally would would choose to, to work on. But I think that this is going to end up looking as it should, I guess, in my mind, what I think this should look like in the end. The, the linen is what it needed. I'm using mostly called for threads, but um, I'm just going to be honest. I'm cheap. I have um, a complete set of DMC floss times probably six. In another video, I'll show you um, how I store my floss and um, how much floss I have with, with DMC. And, and I just feel like unless it's a really super variegated floss um, that to where if it's really going to change the effect um, of the piece if I don't use it, um, I'm going to go cheap. I, I love DMC. And so um, we do not have a local needle workshop here in Chattanooga. The closest needle workshop to me is a tiny little hole in the wall in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is down the road close to Nashville, Tennessee. So when I have to go to Nashville um, to the State Department of Education for a meeting or any kind of training, I always try to try to stop in there. It's a very small needlework store. Um, they do have some specialty fibers, but not many. Um, so most of what um, I purchase is online. One, two, three stitch and um, Down St. John Lane are my primary, my go-tos for, for purchasing floss, which, and I, I, I hate that because I would love to, to see the floss um, so that I can make decisions about just how variegated it is, or can I use a replacement? So I rely on uh, floss, my floss tube friends, the videos that that um, I watch other people where they do, um, you know, unboxings of their monthly subscriptions of floss, or or just show things they've purchased for different projects, and it helps me to see, okay, is that if it, when and if I have to use that particular floss color in the future. Is it going to be okay to use a DMC conversion or do I need to really go with the called for thread? So I love it when you share um, floss colors uh, like that from for specialty, fancy floss, um, as Chelsea says, because it helps me since I don't have a needlework store. I think this is going to be all for um, floss tube video number one. 
I was trying to think, what could I do? I guess this goes along with what I was saying earlier about my hesitation to even start filming. Am I going to have enough to talk about? And and so I thought a lot about that. I thought about, I, I don't need to make super long videos just to blather on, just so I have something to say. But I do want it to be worth people's time if, if they're going to bother to, to watch. I want them to have something um, you know, that makes it worthwhile to watch. And so I've, I've thought a lot about um, what the stitching community has done for, for me personally over the last couple of years and, and how much I rely on um, my virtual friends to um, bring joy to my life. And um, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, I, I truly consider um, you all my friends uh, and I refer to you as friends um, often, and um, I love that. I don't have anyone in um, Chattanooga that um, stitches. None of my friends. I've tried to shame them into it. I've tried to beg them. Um, I have no one that um, enjoys this craft. We have no local needlework um, shop, and so the only people um, that I really can talk about um, stitching with is, is you all. And so you really bring joy to my life. And so along those lines, um, I thought about, is, is there something that, that I might could add to my floss tube um, that would bring joy um, to, to you all? And so what I've decided that, that I want to do um, at the end of each video, so that if you're not interested, you can just shoop, turn it off and that's fine because I'll never know. Um, I'm going to kind of end um, with, with just a little bit of inspiration. Um, I do, um, I provide professional development for um, teachers across our school district. Um, I'm an adjunct professor at our local university um, with students who want to be teachers. And so when, when you think about teaching just in general. So those of you that are in education, you know this, I'm preaching to the choir, but, but for people who um, are not in education, um, you may not realize this, um, but teaching is hard. It, it, it's really hard. Um, it's to, to, to really meet the needs of students, um, you have to um, be willing to put in a lot of time um, to plan. You have to collaborate with people. You have to um, um, look for new ways of presenting information so that um, every student in your classroom has access to the curriculum. And because of that, um, I have opportunities in my professional development to share a lot of things. So strategies for how to think about um, differentiating, uh, strategies for um, techniques that you can use to um, encourage students or motivate students. And because of that, um, I have lots and lots and lots of material um, that I've used over the years. Um, just even as just things to just start out a meeting or um, just that I can send out to my teachers as, as encouragement, uh, just to get them excited or inspired about something. And, and, and I have a lot of this, a lot of those resources, and I want to share some of those with you. And so I'm going to um, think up some cute name. I have no idea what it's going to be now, but by the time you see this video, um, you'll see my transition has the name of whatever this portion of the video is going to, going to, going to be called. And I will end my videos um, with this little snippet, just a couple of minutes of, of some sort of, of inspiration that, that I hope uh, will make you smile or make you think or um, uh, put some joy um, into your day. I want to be able to give back. You all have given so much to me. So before I transition into that segment, the last segment, just in case you're going to sign off before that, happens, I want to say thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to spend some time with me. Um, it means the world to me. Um, 
and just recording this and having an opportunity to talk to you because I'm going to believe that all of my virtual friends are watching this. Whether you really ever watch it or not in my mind, I'm talking to you um, because you talk to me every week. So now I'm just all of a sudden talking back. So thank you. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to, um, to talk back uh, to you. Have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you soon. Bye. There's an old saying that goes like this. If the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is to eat a live frog, then nothing worse can happen to you for the rest of the day. I don't know about you, but I'd say that's a pretty safe assumption. Brian Tracy, in his book, Eat That Frog, says your frog should be the most difficult item on your things to do list. The one where you're most likely to procrastinate because if you eat that first, it will give you energy and momentum for the rest of the day. But if you don't, and you let him sit there on that plate and stare at you while you do a hundred unimportant things, it can drain your energy. You won't even know it. So here's your assignment. For the next 30 days, take a look at your list, circle the frog, and eat that first. You'll thank me for it. See you next time.